things or blah blah, these type of things, which is not in itself good abortion, Rupa Goswami has rejected by saying, Anya Bila Sita Sunyam. Bhakti should be completely unmixed, it should be one pointed and pure. Then one may say, then why Rupa Goswami has only said Anya Bilas? What is the necessity for Anya Bilas Sita? Therefore, Rupa Goswami has said, sometimes a devotee, because he has no other recourse or there is some emergency, they may ask Krishna for some help. The example given of, Drop, of Draupadi, she was being stripped naked in the assembly of the Kurus, therefore she prayed, Rakur Sadhanam Apto Jiva Tohari. She raised her hands and prayed, Krishna, protect me. Therefore, it may seem this is not devotion because she is praying to Krishna for something for herself, but Rupa Goswami said, because this is in an emergency situation, therefore some concession is given. For example, I'm about to be eaten by a tiger and I pray, oh Krishna, save me. Bhakti is not lost because it's an emergency. Life is in danger at that time. Also, Bhakti should not be covered by Gyan or Karma. For example, we know there's many Kirtan groups in America and around the world, they're also chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It may look like they're performing devotion, but their end goal is to become one with God, to merge with God. Therefore, this cannot be called devotion, because if you become one with God, you cannot serve Him. Therefore, devotion is there, but it's covered by Gyan, the desire for liberation. Therefore, this has been rejected also. And someone also may go to the temple, especially on the day of lottery, then he has bought a lottery ticket. Instead of giving one stick of incense, he waves five sticks of incense to Krishna. Oh Krishna, if I win the lottery, I promise I'll give you half. Do I say half? I meant 10%. <laughs> Therefore, he is worshipping Krishna, he is performing service to Krishna, but his desire is his own material enjoyment. Therefore, Rupa Goswami has rejected both these things. But still, Rupa Goswami has said, Anavrita, because one cannot live completely without knowledge, although some people manage it, some people cannot live completely without knowledge or without karma. For example, even breathing, even eating, even sitting, even sleeping, this is called karma. Therefore, the karma which is performed in a way which is favorable to Krishna, for example, I have to sleep, otherwise how I can go to Mongolati. If I cannot eat, then I cannot perform my devotion. Therefore, karma of eating does not cover devotion as long as it's performed in a way that is favorable towards the cultivation of devotion. Therefore, Rupa Goswami has given this and so much more that I have missed out. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma adidabhutam anukulena krishna anushilanam bhaktir uttama. Thank you. Bhutan Prabhu, please think on this slope. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma nasa. In brief, what he told you. The brief part will be easy, I think. <laughs> I want that all kind them. I will ask from the ladies also to speak on this subject. Oma Gyana Timaranda Sya Gyananjana Savakaya Jakshula Nilitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurubay Maha. I'm I'm about to show how far I have to go in my devotion because I can't even hold a candle to Damodar Maharaj's exposition on the verse. But the main point that I've taken from Damodar Maharaj and from Srila Gurudev's uh, discussions in the past on this topic is that devotional service has to be performed without any sense of personal aggrandizement, that one has to be completely dedicated to the object of devotion and that uh, one should not have any mixture um, in one's devotion for self-gain of any type, whether that's the acquisition of knowledge which leads one to ultimately to liberation and personalist realization or <clears throat> whether that's an even lower level of approaching Krishna for some material gain. Uh, these things are not accepted as pure bhakti. Um, when we tinge our bhakti, when we tinge our practices with some hope for personal aggrandizement, we can never obtain the 
object of devotion, which our acharyas are telling us is the highest goal of life. Furthermore, uh, after we examine ourselves and ask, is our bhakti pure? Is our intention pure in what we're doing? Uh, the next question is, are we actually performing that bhakti an, in an uninterrupted way? Uh, so are we starting and stopping? Are we waking up in the morning and doing our uh, whatever number of uh, rounds or malas that we do every day and then when we are done with our mala we put our bead back down and forget Krishna or forget our Guru Seva. So everything that we do, whether it's uh, some practical seva, some practical service for the Guru, uh, serving the devotees, serving the holy name, uh, serving the deity, whatever we do we should try to cultivate within ourselves an uninterrupted flow uh, where in our minds and our hearts we're constantly striving in a deep meditation for the attainment of our goal. Um, uh, the last thing that I'll be able to say today is that the ultimate goal of pure bhakti is a thing which gives all of these other things that we could possibly hope for and so much more. As Srila Gurudev said in the beginning of this class, um, that the highest goal, the highest love and affection, the pure love of God, the pure love of Radha and Krishna, the most intimate aspects of the Supreme Lord are attained by this um, uh, this pure bhakti. That's it. That's my humble offering. Why not Anna Bilas Sunna? Why Anna Bilasita Sunna? Why? Oh, you can see it here and <laughs> Allah Vilasa Sunnam. But it has been told Anna Vilasita Sunnam. It all. What do you? No. <laughs> he, he could not give, give attention. <laughs> you, you, Prabhu, yes. <coughs> So, <laughs> Rohan, you should be ready for next day. <coughs> but then you have to say what the question will be. Today you have to say what the question will be tomorrow. <laughs> really, you should understand what really is to practice. I want that all food practice knowingly. Anya abhilash. Anya abhilash means other desires. So the desire that is required is the desire to serve Krishna and please Krishna favorably. <clears throat> and Anya abhilash means any desire other than that. Any fruitive desire for uh, any karma performed for some material activity that's going to come. Or desire for jnana, desire for mystic siddhis, desire for merging into the into Brahman. So, under Siddha Gurudev's inspiration, uh, Pujipad uh, Dhamma Maharaj explained that 
if somebody has, generally they have no desire. But when an emergency arrives, then they may appeal to Krishna for help. Just like, for example, it is the duty of the devotee to protect his life, to protect his body. Like when Vasudev, uh, Vasudev when David, he was being attacked by Kansa. So it's explained that the devotee has to protect his life because his life is being used in the service of Krishna. So if some external agency comes and threatens the devotee's life, then it's okay to appeal to Krishna, oh, please help me, because otherwise how I can serve you. Then if Krishna likes to protect, it's okay. Otherwise, if he doesn't, the devotee also accepts that. For example, uh, Ambarish Maharaj, when he was confronted by Druvas Muni, Druvas Muni, somehow or other, he became very angry with Ambarish Maharaj, pulled out some of his dreadlocks, threw it on the ground, and this huge fiery demon came. So Ambarish Maharaj, actually, he made no appeal. It's not recorded that he made any appeal to Krishna. He just folded his hands and he waited. Oh, if Krishna wants to burn me up, it's okay. If he wants to come in the form of a fiery demon, it's okay. Krishna didn't want. He sent Sudarshan Chakra, and Sudarshan Chakra burnt up the fiery demon. Uh, and then chased Gurras Muni. But in any case, so the, the devotee, he may appeal, but in any case, he accepts Krishna's decision. Okay, if you'd like to protect me, it's okay. Otherwise, it's okay. Thakur Bhakti Vinod is saying, you can kill me, you can save me, as you like, because I'm your property. Sold out animal. Sold out animal doesn't make any endeavor. He just appears, he's just relying completely on the uh, master. So, Anyabilas, the Shunyam. Not just Anyabilas, but the tendency to have these desires. In the general run of things, the devotee does not have such desires. Only in the case of emergency, he may have. Anyabilas, the Shunyam. Jnana, karma, and avritam. So, generally speaking, uh, there's no need to engage in karma to improve our bhakti. Karma cannot improve bhakti. On the contrary, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Kako explains in Madhuri Kadamani, uh, Srila Gurudev was explaining during Kartik, that only when there is some mixture at least of bhakti, then karma can be successful, otherwise not. Similarly, only where there's some admixture of jnan, uh, of bhakti, then jnan can be successful, otherwise not. Just like, for example, if somebody wants to get liberation, so they can practice for hundreds and thousands of lifetimes. But if they just chant the holy name, by uh, nama abhas, they can get liberation. Like this. So, jnana karmadya anavritam. Avritam means covered. Anavritam means not covered. So actually we have to perform karma. Gurudev has explained, breathing is also karma. Now we're walking backwards and forwards between the hotel and here. This is karma. We have to make some money or somehow or other get some finances together to come here. This is also karma. So does that mean that our bhakti has been covered? No. Anavrita, because the whole goal is to engage in devotional service. The whole goal is to hear from the lotus mouth of the pure devotee. Therefore, not avritam, it's anavritam. And jnana also. We have to have some knowledge. Oh, we must have knowledge. Like it said, somebody said that Aristotle said that the brain actually isn't used for thinking. It's just used for cooling the blood. But some modern commentator, he said, this is only true of some people. <laughs> so in other words, actually we have to think. We have to have some knowledge. But if that knowledge is furthering our bhakti, then it's okay. The knowledge, for example, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead, and the Jeev is the tiny servant of Krishna, this jnana is necessary. Ah. Not the knowledge that the individual Jeev is actually God, or that he's actually part of Brahman. This is not necessary. But then at the end, we have even this knowledge, Sri Rupa Goswami says, even this knowledge has to be given up. That Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just like Sri Gurudeva said that your Swami Maharaj, he came to teach you that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I come to teach you to forget that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But we also have to be careful because you can't, according to linguistics, you can't forget something that you never knew in the first place. So if we artificially try to imitate Srila Gurudev's mood, Raj's mood, that Krishna is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Just show them I never think that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The gopis never think. So if we artificially think, ah, Krishna, we don't care for Krishna. He's just a black sheep anyway. What do we care for Krishna? We just love Radha. This will not work. Oh. We, have, we should have tattva, just like it was explained this morning. First of all, we have that tattva. If we don't have tattva, then we have to come back and learn tattva. And then by hearing from the lips of the pure devotee, his braj moods of loving service to Krishna in complete n neglect of Krishna's Bhagavata, this will naturally sweep out these moods from our heart. Anukulyena. So, Yashoda Maharaj is chastising Krishna. So what is Krishna feeling? Ah, he's feeling fear, but he's also feeling her love. Just like we have experience, sometimes we're traveling in Russia. So some, sometimes then the Russian devotees have to discipline us. Oh, now you have to take rest, now you have to take some exercise, now you have to do this, now you have to do that. Very strict, some of them very strict, almost ferocious. <laughs> but in that strictness, you can feel, oh, there's love. Just like Krishna also, he likes to taste that. This is the beauty of the left-wing gopis. When Krishna at Kurukshetra, he met with the gopis. The gopis hadn't seen it for so long. And instead of Krishna apologizing to the gopis, but oh, I'm so sorry, I haven't been back to Vrindavan. Uh, how are you like this? He started that, oh, why are you feeling separation from me? Don't you know I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Don't you know if you just meditate on my lotus feet, you won't feel any separation, don't you know this? And the right wing gopis, they say, oh, very nice, thank you, we, we accept this. And the left wing gopis, oh, you think we should engage in meditation on your lotus feet? We're trying to forget you. <laughs> so strong, they're giving him the source so strongly. Chastising, chastising, like anything. A Krishna's feeling their love so much. So this is Anukul. This is Anukul. Krishna Silana. And oh, as uh, Shripadamada Maharaj explained. So we have to make some effort, some endeavor. Not only physical endeavor. Srila Gurudev is emphasizing. Sometimes people go out and they're making life members, they're distributing books, so many things. So I'm performing so much service. And I will go back home back to Godhead at the end of this life. Then. No, we have to moods also, Chesta. That difference between Kanishtadikari, Majimadikari. Majimadikari is offering with mood. Kanishtadikari is like offering chunks to Krishna, chunks of matter. Therefore, he's prakritabhakti. He's offering prakriti. Krishna doesn't need our prakriti. He doesn't need our incense. He's got lovely incense, lovely fruit, lovely flowers, everything in the spiritual world. But he wants this mood from the heart. So this kind of anushilanam also is required. So there's so many points. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Very good explanation. <laughs> My Siksha Guru, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, came in Western countries and he told everywhere, Krishna is Supreme Lord. But I had come to say, forget this, Krishna is not Supreme Lord. We should eat Prajbhashi and try to forget this. Always he, Nandan, he is the servant of, of Brijabhasi, all these things. He can beg pardon in the lotus feet of gopis. How he is Supreme Lord? So we should try to forget forever <laughs> and be one of the Brijabhasi. Very good. Ankulle in a Krishna Anushlanam. Hmm? What is Ankulla? One of the ladies should take. Oh, he knows. She knows. Other. You. Stand up. No, no, that. Oh, you, you, you. Yes. Stand up. Uh, Krishna Priya, no. Oh, yes. 
What do you mean by Ankulena? <laughs> Ankulena means everything that's favorable for Bhakti. So Ankulena means we should reject everything that's unfavorable for Bhakti. Then by Anushilanam? Anushilanam is like dedicating yourself to Krishna and offering everything to him and um, rejecting everything that's unfavorable <laughs> for your bhakti. <laughs> Try to understand and preach my mission. All ladies, all my, my dear sons and brothers, they should know all these things. And then you can preach, otherwise what? Go distribution. This will not do. You will have to see what are, what is the, under the box. Then sit down. <coughs> now, we know from Srimad Bhagavatam that Dhru Maharaj did astrologies and he took darshan of Narayan. His bhakti is pure or not? Jeev. Jnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurum Ritam Hena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama First of all, I offer my respectful obeisances to my spiritual master, Om Vishnu Padvakti Vrantar Narayan Maharaj, and then to all the Vaishnavas present here today. Srila Gurudev is asking that Juva Maharaj, he took direct darshan of Narayan, he got darshan of Krishna, of Bhagavan, of God, but was his bhakti pure? Does it fall under the category of this sloka that we've been discussing? Anya Bilasita Sunyam. If we understand a little bit about the history of Juga Maharaj, he was, a, he was a prince. And at that time, his father, you know, one of his stepmothers told him that he can't sit on the lap of his father. Right? And he was very hurt by this. And because of this, he went into the forest and performed austerities for a very long time. And, and then eventually Narad Rishi came and gave, gave him mantra and he, by performing this he got darshan of Narayan. But during the time of his practice, what he wanted was to have a kingdom greater than his father. A kingdom that is, yeah, a kingdom greater than his father. This was, Gurudev explains in Matur, Bhajane Bhaviva Jaha Siddhite Paive Taha that whatever you think of in the time of bhajan, whatever you're praying for, when you're practicing or cultivating your spiritual life, in perfection you will attain this. Like that. So when he took darshan of Narayan, he realized that what he was aspiring for, what he was looking for, was not, not worthwhile. It wasn't worth it. Right? He actually said, I was looking for broken pieces of glass and I found a diamond. But he didn't want this. But still because at the time of his practice, of bhakti, of, not of bhakti, of his 
Sadhan, he still had, is still in Druglok now, there. So the answer, according to my understanding, is no. His bhakti was not completely pure. It was not according to the sloka of Srila Rupa Goswami Anya Vilasita Sunyam. Okay. Now, Dhru Bhakti is not pure. It is called Shakam Bhakti. With worldly desire. Though he is disciple of Narad, and by the grace of Narad, he took the darshan. But he wanted, oh, I should be the king of my father's property. Not of, not this. He received the he became the king. He became the king. No? But at the time of departure from this world, when chariot came, Iman came, for him to take him, then he told, I will not go alone. I want that my mother, she should also go with me. And then, oh, your mother is going, you should come. And he went. So he received a position, not in Taikuntha, but Hari wrote in this Brahmanda. Rama Priya Baikuntha. Not in that. And nothing service. Like a king. So this is not pure bhakti. So don't have any worldly desire. Only how we can serve Krishna. Whatever you do to please Krishna, Guru, Vaishnava. This is all. Don't do anything. If you are eating, eat for Krishna. Sleeping for Krishna. How? By any sadhu who has the reality, you should learn this very thing. Now, Pranat Maharaj, how is his bhakti? You can. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya, Jnanam Jena Salakaya, Chaksurun Nilitam Yena Tasma Sri Guru Venama. First I offer my unlimited obeisances and the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Diksha Guru Dev, Mitsuri with Vishka Om Vishnu Padas Gautara Satashri Srimad, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. And the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shiksha Guru Dev, Om Vishnu Padas Gautara Satashri Srimad Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayangu Sai Maharaj, to all of our Guru Varga and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to explain about the nature of the